Buenas tardes y bienvenidos. Soy la reverenda Katie Romano Griffin, ministra asistente de Cedar Lane, y es muy bueno estar hoy junto con usted y nuestros invitados especiales, el obispo reverendo Dr. William Barber y Doña Rosa Gutierrez. Good afternoon and welcome. I'm the Reverend Katie Romano Griffin, Assistant Minister at Cedar Lane, and it is so good to be together with you today and our special guests, the Reverend, the Bishop Reverend Dr. William Barber and Doña Rosa Gutierrez Lopez. Muchísimas gracias. <laughs> Muchísimas gracias, oh, amigos en La Red, en Pico, Sanctuary DMV, Congregation Network, Congregation Action Network, y todos personas um, conectar con Sanctuario. Thank you to everyone who is connected with Sanctuary. Muchísimas gracias, amigos en the media. We have um, many different media agencies here today. Thank you, thank you for being here to bear witness to this important time. Los invito, Kristen Green, intern minister. Levante al cuerpo o espíritu as we sing, cantamos juntos, as we sing together. The words will be on the screen. Please rise in body or spirit. Love, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving. Los invito a tomar un respiro a medida que entramos en este momento juntos en la presencia de lo que cada uno considera santo y sagrado. I invite you to take a breath as we enter into this holy moment present to what we hold sacred. Comenzamos nuestro tiempo junto con una versión adaptada de un verso de apertura por el reverendo Fulgence Najimena. We begin our time together with an adapted version of an opening verse by the reverend Fulgence Najimena. Cuando los extraños se encuentren, surgen infinitas posibilidades, nuevas experiencias, nuevas maneras de atender y nuevas formas de acción. When strangers meet, endless possibilities emerge, new experiences, new ways of understanding, and new ways of taking action. 
cuando los extraños se encuentran cada uno presto especial atención al otro. When strangers meet, each pays special attention to the other. Cada uno está llamado a servir algo más grande que una sola persona. Each is called to serve something larger than one person. Hoy comencemos nuestro tiempo junto con la apertura, la voluntad, crecer, la curiosidad rica y un propósito común. Today, let's begin our time together with openness, willingness to grow, rich curiosity, and a common purpose. Amen. Dentro de un momento, escucharemos primero a uh, Jasmine Tahidi, una abogada, y luego a Doña Rosa, su historia, y luego el al reverendo Abijanamanchi, Ministerio Principal de Sierra Leone, y luego al obispo reverendo El Barbar hablará y orará con nosotros. In a moment, we'll hear first from Jasmine Tahidi, who is Doña Rosa's attorney. Then we'll hear from Doña Rosa about her story. Then from Reverend Abi Janamanchi, senior minister at Cedar Lane. And then the Bishop Reverend Dr. Barber will speak and pray with us. Jasmine? So I just want to thank everybody for having me. Um, for Rosa's case, the next steps are to get Immigration and Customs Enforcement to accept her stay of removal. Right now, they're refusing to even look at it or accept it, citing an internal policy that's not binding under the law. So our hope is that we can reach out to ICE to have them have a fair consideration of allowing her to stay here with her children. Second, she has a case pending before the Board of Immigration Appeals. We want to allow her to stay here while that process continues to go forward. She's never had the opportunity to speak to a judge about her reasons for fearing to return to her country, and she just wants what every immigrant wants, which is a chance to be heard and to see if she can stay here legally with her children. So that's, you know, those are my goals, and that's what everyone here is working with me um, to achieve that for her. Thank you. Gracias, Jasmine. Este viernes se cumplirán cinco meses desde que Doña Rosa ingresó a Sanctuario a Sierra Leone con la esperanza de darle justicia y el debido proceso para que pueda regresar con su familia. Sus tres hijos nacidos en Estados Unidos, su trabajo y su vida. This Friday will mark five months since Doña Rosa entered sanctuary at Cedar Lane with the hope of giving justice and due process time so that she might return to her family, her three U.S. citizen children, her job, her life. En un momento, Doña Rosa compartirá algo de historia contigo. Serás movido por su fuerza, resistencia y coraje. In a moment, Doña Rosa will share some of her story with you, and you'll be moved by her strength, her resilience, and her courage. Por favor, levántate en cuerpo o espíritu para honorar a Doña Rosa. Please rise and body your spirit to honor Doña Rosa. Muchas gracias. Y, te, y sean todos bienvenidos. Thanks, everyone. Please be welcome. Gracias por la ayuda que me están brindando y por asistir um, y, y poder presentarles al reverendo William Barber, que está, ha venido a, a, aquí para apoyar y so, uh, ay, para ayudarme en mi caso. Thank you once again. I want to offer a welcome to you, as, as well as a big thanks to 
Reverend William Barber, who's come here, and for his and your support in helping me get my case reopened once again. Uh, les voy a, a, a comentar un parte de, de, de mi caso. La mayoría de personas ya la conocen, pero hay personas nuevas que a lo mejor no, no conocen uh, de mi caso. I want to share a little bit with you about my case. I know several of you may already know and have heard my story, but I do know that some of you may not have, and so I want to take the opportunity to share my story. Okay. Uh, yo llegué a este país uh, el 11 de diciembre del 2005 porque estaba siendo amenazada por un grupo de personas y mi vida corría peligro. I came to this country on December 11th of 2005, escaping some threats, um, life threats against me, from some folks back home. Oh, yo ingresé el 11 de diciembre, me entregué a migración pidiendo asilo político y yo tuve una corte el 10 de enero del 2006, la corte la cual yo, yo perdí y por eso yo tengo una orden de deportación. So as soon as I arrived on December 11th, shortly after I turned myself into ICE or immigration seeking political asylum. They gave me a court date um, of January 10th, 2006, which I missed. And so since then, they um, have actually put a, a deportation order against me. In 2014, migration me buscaba y me encontró, y yo me puse en contacto con ellos. Y yo tuve un proceso desde el 2014. Uh, yo tuve un abogado en ese entonces y llenó una aplicación para un permiso de trabajo. So around 2014, immigration had been looking for me, and so when I found out that they were looking for me, I reached out, and, um, and at the time, I had gotten a lawyer, and I had applied for a work permit. Y yo venía a Fairfax porque yo, mis, mi vida es, estaba hecha en, en Fredericksburg, Virginia, allá es donde se encuentran mis hijos en este momento. Y yo venía desde de, de Virginia a Ferfa, a Fred, de Fredericksburg a Fairfax a, a reportarme cada año con ICE. So since then, um, I was living in Fredericksburg, Virginia. That's where I live, and, um, and that's where I had been living. And so I was going to Fairfax every year to do a check-in with ICE as requested. Y Todo estaba bien cuando estaba la administración Obama, pero cuando cambió la administración Trump fue terrible, frustrante para mí, porque un 16 de mayo del 2017 yo fui a reportarme y mi sorpresa fue que me mandaron a Richmond el 17 de, de, de mayo a, y mi sorpresa fue que me pusieron un grillete, el cual yo se lo voy a mostrar ahorita. So Everything was, seems to be, have been okay during the Obama administration, but once the Trump administration took over, things began to shift and change dramatically. To my surprise, on May 16th of 2017, I, would, I went for my check-in and they sent me to Richmond, at which point on that day of May 16th of 2017, uh, and to my dismay, when they sent me to Richmond, they put an ankle monitor, which I just showed you. Y para mí fue un, un momento tan frustrante porque yo estuve cinco horas llorando porque no me lo quería dejar poner porque yo les decía a ellos que solo por perder una, una, una corte no era para que me trataran como una criminal. And so at that time I spent roughly about five hours crying nonstop and I did not want them to put this ankle monitor on me and I did not understand why they wanted to treat me not, like a criminal for the mere fact of just missing one court date a while back. Desde ese momento fue una, para mí fue una, como una os, osadía porque semana a semana yo iba a los chequeos. And so it became just a very difficult story. Uh, every day, it, it was, every week I had to go in to check-ins now. Sí, y, y hubo un momento que ellos me presionaron tanto, fue en el, en el 2018, que necesitamos tu pasaporte, necesitamos tu ticket uh, para que te vayas a tu país. Y me pusieron fecha que lo tenía que comprar el 10 de diciembre. And so they began to 
threatening me and challenging me and they say, well, we need you to have your passport ready, we need you to have a plane ticket and they told me that by December 10th I needed to have a ticket to go back home. Y decidí tomar santuario porque yo tengo tres niños ciudadanos americanos que ellos no, si van a mi país van a sufrir porque allá, yo, porque yo estoy amenazada de muerte y yéndose allá es como que yo lo lleve también a la muerte porque allá la violencia no respeta a nadie, ni a adultos, ni a niños. And so I decided to take sanctuary at that time. I have three children who are U.S. born citizens. And I knew that if I were to leave and take my children with me, it meant that I was basically taking them to their death. Uh, I was being threatened. My life is threatened over there. And to take them with me meant, because over there, there's no, there are no respecter of children or people, you know, they're, they're, they would just die as well. Y tengo un niño que tiene Down syndrome, el cual él, él me necesita aquí para que, porque yo soy el soporte de mis tres hijos y yo soy la que lo llevo a, la, a diferentes especialistas porque él tiene muchos especialistas, el cual él necesita, necesita de mí, de que yo esté presente con él. And especially have a child who has Down syndrome and he really needs me. I'm his only support and he has several specialists for several different types of conditions that he has and I really need to be here to support him. Para mí los primeros días es estar, decidí tomar santuario porque si yo me iba para mi país no iba a poder pelear por mi caso y no, podí, no iba a poder ver a mis hijos. Y fue muy doloroso para mí separarme de mis hijos porque jamás yo me había separado de mis hijos, nunca, nunca. Y fue muy frustrante para mí. Y yo no le deseo lo que yo estoy pasando con otras madres, otros pa o padres o familiares que tiene que aquí en esta administración están separando a sus hijos de la familia. Yo creo que no no es justo. And so I took sanctuary. Um, I knew that I I wanted to be with my children. I do not want to be separated from my children. No mother or father for that matter should be separated from their children. And that's what this administration is doing. They are separating families. Yo creo que es momento de hacer justicia porque Es, es tiempo de que a nosotros los, los migrantes, no de Centroamérica ni Suramérica, es a nivel de todo el mundo, es, ya es tiempo de que los traten con dignidad y con respeto, porque todo el ser humano necesita ser respetado. It's time for justice, because it's not just a matter of Central Americans or South American, it's, it's people from all over the world, and immigrants deserve to be uh, recognized and respected, and, and justice needs to, needs to come. Y yo, yo estoy muy agradecida con todas las organizaciones que me han brindado todo el amor y el, el cariño y el apoyo que yo nunca he tenido allá afuera. Y, y también les doy gracias por todas esas familias que no, puede, no les pueden dar gracias por toda la ayuda que, que le brindan, porque hay personas que están presos y Y, hay, y no tienen a nadie que les ayude. Y aquí ha, Dios ha puesto ángeles que son ustedes para que nos ayude a nosotros, a la comunidad migrante. And I want to thank each and every one of you. I want to thank every organization that has stepped up. And not only that, I want to thank on behalf of those who can't thank you, those who are imprisoned right now because of their immigration status. I want to thank God that he sent angels such as yourself to raise up for such a time as this to do the work that needs to be done for the immigrants at this time. Y le doy gracias a don Omar Ángel que me ha, me ha ayudado mucho, 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 y estoy infinitamente agradecida con él y con todas las organizaciones que conjunto con él trabajan. Muchísimas gracias. Son unos ángeles, no solo para mí, también para todas las familias, todas las familias que, que han ayudado día con día, minuto a minuto. Y yo creo que si esas personas no les han podido dar las gracias y el agradecimiento, en nombre de ellos, yo les doy agradecimiento a todos porque a, en este momento pueden estar encarcelados. And I also want to give thanks to um, Mr. Omar Ángel uh, and his organization and really all of the work that he's been doing and so many of you and truly speaking, uh, I, I just really want to thank 
those angels that, that God has placed, all of you. That, and, and again, I just want to say thank you on behalf of those who can't say thank you because they're imprisoned and, and, and the work that you guys continue to do. So thank you. Le pido a Dios todas las noches que le toque el corazón a esas personas como las personas que trabajan en migración, que le toque el corazón, que no lo debo de decir, ¿verdad? A Donald Trump, que no sea tan racista, que todos tenemos un corazón y todos somos seres humanos. Y es muy duro que, que esta administración esté separando a nuestros hijos del lado de nosotros, el cual nosotros venimos aquí huyendo de la violencia, porque nuestras vidas corren peligros y también, por, y hay personas que vienen por darle un futuro mejor a sus hijos. I pray each night that God would just touch the hearts of all those, the politicians, and maybe I shouldn't say his name, but Donald Trump, that they would just stop all the, the, the racism and, and the separation and, and all the hurt because um, a lot of us are coming to this country because we're either fleeing from death or threats against our lives or whether we want to give a better opportunity to our children. And so we don't deserve to be treated the way that we've been treated. So I, I, I pray that, that he would just turn their hearts. Y también voy a, a mencionar unos nombres, el cual est estas personas están en santuario. Primeramente, Janet Vizguerra, que está en Colorado. I want to mention some names. These folks are currently in sanctuary, but Janet Vizguerra, who's in Colorado. Um, Rosa, que está en North Carolina. Rosa, in North Carolina. Uh, María, que está en Richmond, Virginia. María, en Richmond, Virginia. Uh, Abby, que está en Charlottesville, Virginia, también. Abby, who is also in Charlottesville, Virginia, as well. Y voy a hablar por todas aquellas personas que yo no conozco, pero igual están en santuario. And I want to speak on behalf of all those people who I yet don't know, but who are in sanctuary. Y yo oro por ellas o por todas las personas que están encarceladas, que sean liberadas, porque nosotros venimos aquí huyendo de la violencia. And I pray for those people who are in prison because that they would be set free because we come here seeking liberty and being away from violence. Hoy también voy a hablar por Orquídea que ella estuvo aquí el 20 de marzo y también um, hay que ayudar al hijo de Orquídea que el, y el cual está en un centro de detención que ya tiene Un año casi con cuatro meses que él está en, en detención y él no ha podido salir. I also want to call out Orquídea. She was with us on March 20th. And her case, she needs help. Her son has been in prison for about a year and four months now in his case. Uh, and he's not been able to, to come out of prison. Sí, gracias. Y muchas gracias. Gracias por toda la ayuda. Dios los bendiga enormemente e infinitamente y, y Dios les va a proveer para que ustedes lo sigan ayudando a nuestra comunidad migrante y también gracias por el reverendo William Barber. Muchas gracias por la ayuda. Thank you, thank you, thank you everyone. God bless you. Thank you for your help. God is going to provide to you for what you're doing and so that you continue your work towards the immigrant community and thank you Reverend Barber, William, uh, William Barber as well. Thank God bless you all. Y Quiero decir otra cosa. Quiero decir otra cosa. Yo me comprometo como persona que estoy en santuario, al salir de, mi, de aquí de santuario, trabajar con la comunidad migrante, la comunidad que me necesita a mí allá afuera para ayudarlos. Muchas gracias. And I also make a commitment to you today. I am committed that once I leave sanctuary, I will continue the work to help those, the immigrant community, that need help outside of these walls. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Doña Rosa, for your words of courageous witness. 
and the grace and the humor that you carry while being present to what is unfolding. We're so deeply honored and blessed to welcome back to Cedar Lane the Reverend Dr. William Barber. When a week ago, Tuesday, I had the privilege of joining some of you uh, at uh, this event in DC where Reverend Barber was conferred the first Marcus Raskin Award for civic engagement and prophetic leadership. And it was there that I connected with Roz Pellis about checking in about Doña Rosa's situation. And she immediately said, Reverend Barber would like to come and meet with Doña Rosa to pray with her and your congregation for the sacred work that you're doing. What an amazing gift and a blessing. Of course, I immediately said yes. And here we are. And when we spoke, Reverend Barber and I, he lifted up something that has kind of stayed with me. And as this day has progressed, it is becoming more and more real. He shared with me how that day, the scripture that came to him was Paul's words to the Corinthians about the ministry of presence. And he talked about, and the, and the verse is, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling, and my speech and my message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power, so that your faith might not rest in the wisdom of people, but in the power of God. And as I have pondered it, I felt you were lifting up presence as a noun, not as a verb, as a state of being, than doing. Because the ministry of presence that we will be with and serve people even when it makes us uncomfortable and fearful. That we will stand with people in the midst of anxiety and fear, and most importantly in these difficult times, we will be realists and idealists. And that we will not pretend somehow that things are better or worse than they actually are. So the ministry of presence is not to escape from the world, but to prepare ourselves for whatever it is that we are called to be and do in this world. Not to escape from our lives, but to discover how we might live them more fully. Not to take refuge in inaction, feeling overwhelmed by all that we are confronted with, but to find the strength and the courage to take the actions that are revealed to us. And Doña Rosa is a living example of how to be present. When speaking of His Holiness the Dalai Lama, Tibetans use the word kundun. You may remember the movie that came out. Kundun. Kundun means presence. It is neither a misnomer nor an exaggeration. In the Dalai Lama's presence, you become more present. I had that experience seven years ago in his presence. In Reverend Barber's presence, you become more present. A few years ago, I participated in a training with other religious leaders and activists and people from impacted communities for three days. And we were with Reverend Barber 
in North Carolina. And we engaged in various complex and engaging conversations. In all of that, what I witnessed was how Reverend Barber was right there with us all the time, not just in his thinking, in his being, but in his feeling. And I noticed that in his presence, all of us somehow became more open, more loving, and also more present just by being in his presence. So thank you for this incredible gift of your presence, Reverend Barber. And welcome. Amen. Turn to someone and tell them at this press conference, thank you for being present. Look at them, turn and look at them, tell them, thank you for being present. I um, want to thank the 25 congregations and this congregation this panel of the people who are assisting daily and daily to stand with Sister Rosa Lopez in this battle against um, this particular expression in this moment of what I call uh, empire evil. Uh, when people think that they, because they have a little human power, earthly power, that they literally have the authority to stand against the moral arc of the universe. I wanna ask Rosa to come and stand by me and my friend here, interpreter, and pastor to come, and our dear sister, sister, attorney, and some others who are here in the Poor People's Campaign, the Repairs of the Breed, we never stand alone. So if you would like to come so that the media is able to send out a picture of how united we are, you're welcome to come, stand at the front, stand to the side as we unite together, Good. stand. In essence, by set, taking her into sanctuary, you are saying, I am Rosa Lopez. And that we recognize her as an angel among us, for the scripture says, be careful how you entertain people, because you may be entertaining an angel unaware. And there are times when the only thing that can overthrow a system of oppression is for the oppressive system to begin touching the wrong people. It was that way in the civil rights movement. There were a lot of people that were thrown off the bus, but when they threw Rosa Parks off, come on, Roz, when they throw Rosa Parks off, it had a ripple effect. And I believe sincerely that Rosa is among many, and not to say that others aren't important, but sometimes the uniqueness of a story, like when they grabbed Jesus, other prophets had been killed. But sometimes the uniqueness of a story is so powerful. A person's captivity is able to take captivity captive <laughs> and expose just how ugly it is. I um, want to ask you for a moment, and I want to do this because of the media that's here. What other media are here? Is there print media here? I know there was. There's some print media. Sojourners who are Jorge Ramos, Deli Mundo, 
I know, and we're going to be sending it out to the post and to other places. But I want all of you who see this video, regardless of your race, your color, or your creed, to think for a moment. What if I was to tell you there was a story of a mother with three children, an 11-year-old girl, a nine-year-old boy, and a seven-year-old son with Down syndrome? And what if I was to tell you that all of them are American citizens? And what if I was to tell you that the mother was born in a country, grew up rural, grew up farming, and she was harassed by a group of workers. And there came a period in her life that those group of workers marched past her home with machetes as a sign of what they were going to do to her. If, they didn't, if she didn't bow to their wishes. And what if that mother knew she had to leave? And the only way was by foot and bus, through tears, through pain. And what if that mother knew that the only place she could go would be the place whose military policies had created and disrupted her country in such a way that gangsters like the ones she was fleeing were often re-released in that company, country or had often been empowered because of the destabilization that the country she was trying to flee to had caused. And yet she saw that country as the only hope. And what if she got there? And what if she was 13 years old working there? And 13 years paying taxes? And what if in a country where so many people always brag about being quote unquote Christian, she was a faithful believer in God and of Jesus Christ. Never had a criminal record. But then all of a sudden, because of one election, because she had mistakenly missed a court date, no other issues, the country she fled to because people wanted to cut her up with machetes, now wants to divide her from her children send her back to where the death awaits her and her children. And imagine that this was your mother. Imagine that she was this, your sister. Imagine that she was the president's sister or the president's wife, or the president's mother. Imagine that she was white and well off. Imagine that it, this happened in a country where there's a woman in a harbor that says, give me your tired, your poor, your hollow masses. This is what those of you who see this video, we are asking you to see. And to see it until it hurts your heart. See it until it disturbs your mind. See it until it makes you weep. And see it not only in Rosa, but Rosa as an emblem of what's happening to so many others. See it until it gives you the courageous love to not only hold her in sanctuary, but to fight 
with everything you have, every connection you have, to see it changed and to see her life saved. That is, my friends, what's at stake here. And the lawyers have said it's very simple what they're asking. They simply want a stay of her deportation. Say that with me. Stay, stay. Her, deportation. her deportation. They simply want an opportunity for the courts to hear the appeal. She wants her time in front of the court. And according to the laws of this country, she has a right because the 14th Amendment of the Constitution, which is the salvation of the Constitution, which is the only reason gay people have a constitutional right and women and Black Lives Matter and labor and voting rights, it is because of an amendment that was written three years after the end of the Civil War that says all persons, not citizens, all persons that touch this soil, the soil that was toiled by the slaves and stolen from the First Nation natives, The soil that a third of it used to be long to Mexico and South America and was only taken from Mexico because this country wanted to keep slaves and Mexico had freed the slaves. All you have to do is touch this soil and every person has equal protection under the law. And so any system that is trying to deport this darling angel sister without giving her her day in court that we believe if the courts hear, they will rule in her favor on. Any system, I don't care who they are, the only way you cannot stand for Rosa is for you to look at her and believe she is not a person. That she is not a human being. And if you do that, then you are participating in evil. I contend it is not just the president, but the enablers too to turn a whole country or many people in the country against people because they're brown and because they're from a southern border and for your own false ideology of white genocide is sin and is evil. For a country of immigrants to be breaking the backs of immigrants is sin and it is evil to snatch women and children apart in ways we have not seen since slavery. And since the women of First Nations watched their children shot, killed, and snatched away and caged, the kind of mass deportation that we have today, we've not seen it since slavery. The chasing, the caging, whether it be electronic caging or caging in cages. It is sin. God calls us to welcome the stranger. But in a real sense, Rosa is not a stranger. She's been here. She's a mother. She's a lover, she's a worker, she's a carer, she's a person of faith. What is strange is what's happening in this country right now. That's what's strange.
stop. Say stop. Stop. The deportation. The deportation. Give Rosa. A stay. a stay. Let her, Let her have, her day have her day in court. In court. Rule, Rule in her favor. In her favor. Let, Let this, mother this mother and her children, and her children live, 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 pursue happiness, pursue see, happiness liberty. see liberty. Let them, Let them know justice. In the, land, in the land we claim is the land, is the land of, the free. of the free. Leave, Leave her, her alone, alone. And, let and let her, her stay, here. stay here. That's our cry. Anything else is a form of evil. And so, we need you now, those of you that hear us by video and those of you on this stage, to call every political person in this state, local, county, state, and national. We need you to light their phones up with the name of Rosa and us call our call for this stay of deportation to be immediately enforced. Immediately enforced. We need every one of you to act as though this was happening to your mama. To your mama. And think about how you would fight for your mama. Because every time our president keeps suggesting he doesn't like for folk to have the access to the court, he's saying it but not saying it openly. I want to change the 14th Amendment. And if the principles of the 14th Amendment ever change, America is in more trouble than you could ever imagine. And so we must fight for Rosa now because somebody may be coming for your rights later. Finally, Pastor, I want to say it publicly. I've said to Rosa when we had prayer, I was asked to come here for a pastoral visit. So I want all my poor people campaign folk to know I wasn't supposed to be here. I was supposed to be on a plane to Mississippi. Holmes County, Mississippi, one of the poorest counties in the poorest state in the country. And I got a call from Roz that there was a need to make a pastoral visit and that Rosa wanted it. And though my own body is tired and hurting, I told them change the flights. I could have flown out of New York straight into Mississippi. I got on the train 7 o'clock this morning to pray with this and to, for her to anoint me. Not just me to anoint her, and to pray with her and to hear from her. And we committed today, and I told her, and I meant every word of it, that in the Bible there was a time when a lady gave everything she had, like Rosa is giving everything she she's put it all on the line for her children. And there was a lady who gave everything she had. The Bible called it the widow's might. She put everything she had. And when Jesus saw that, he said, I want you to know, I want you to know. And there was another lady that, that, that anointed his feet. And Jesus said to these women who put everything on the line, wherever the gospel is preached, don't forget these names. I told Rosa for the rest of my life, whenever I'm talking about justice, and more, I always talk about it in fusion, but every time I talk from now on about racism against blacks, against voter suppression, and I get to immigration and get to what's happening to our Latino brothers and sisters from, from America. They're from America, just South America. They are American, from America. That from now until then, I'm gonna call the name 
of Rosa Lopez. And what happened to her, what you all have done, and prayerfully the day that she was set free, and I look forward to the day we can stand on stage together and that device is off, your voice is up, your hands are lifted, not only to shout about your freedom, but as an instrument of freedom for others who are yet facing the same thing. I raised this some time ago, and I want the video recorders to get this especially, because we're going to call all these people, call the presidential candidates, call them all. Say, touch your name, say, call them all. And then some of us are going to do one more kind of calling, and that is, I want to ask all the people who are so loud when you want to claim that gay people don't have a right with God, and you're so loud when it comes to prayer in the school, and you're so loud against people who might have a, want to have the right to choose because of a pregnancy. You're so loud. The Bible is so silent, but you're so loud. But when it comes to welcoming the stranger and caring for the hungry and caring for the poor and caring for the thirsty, the Bible in every sacred text is so loud on those things and you are so quiet. Where are you now? When you want to talk about family values, where are you now? Right now is an opportunity for you to redeem yourselves. Because everybody that refuses to stand against this evil deportation that has been going on too long even under Democrats but got worse under the newest administration. To refuse to stand for transformation and justice is to be placed under judgment. Well, the Bible says, when you didn't do it, when you didn't feed the hungry, when you didn't care for the sick, when you didn't welcome the stranger, what you didn't do to them, you also didn't do it to God. And therefore, your nation is under judgment and all those who participated in it. I, my brothers and sisters, don't want to live under that kind of judgment. And I tremble for this nation to think about the judgment it's bringing on itself until Rosa and all of the others are left alone so that in this country they can have life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let us fight to save a country right now even though there are some people so mean, they don't even realize they need saving. It's our time. Let us do everything we can so that our children's children will hear what we've done and be honored and that they too will call the name of Rosa just like they called the name of Rosa Parks. You are our Rosa in this moment. She was trying to set us free from discrimination. God is going to use you to set us free from illegal deportation. Either way, thank God for Rosa. Thank God for Rosa. Are there any questions from the media? Any members of the media? Would you identify yourself? Univision, yes, ma'am. Well, the sanctuary has always meant a place of welcome. I think some people may have changed it, but it should have never been changed because in my scriptures, sanctuary has always meant a house of prayer for all people. 
uh, sanctuary has always meant, whether it was the Underground Railroad of the past, whether it was the churches that hid slaves, and those that were running from abuse, uh, sanctuary has always supposed to have meant more than just a building for worship, but a building where worship unto God makes it welcome to all people. And that is why the sister that sang, sing something that is a song that, that, that we sing, Lord, not only is this the saint, but make me a living sanctuary. Make us a living sanctuary. Make us a welcoming people. Make us a people that loves justice. Make us a people where people who are afraid for their very lives can be among. That is always what sanctuary has supposed to have meant in its deepest meaning. We are supposed to, as one author said, the role of the church is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. And that is still our calling today. It would be a sin, it is a sin, for churches, mosques, temples, synagogues, whatever, and the people in them to exist in a nation and not challenge that nation's injustices. Dr. King once said, any religion <clears throat> that does not challenge the things that damn men's souls is a good for nothing religion. It's good for nothing. When Jesus, whom I believe in, <clears throat> but not to the exclusion of other people's faith, when he preached his first sermon, well before that, Jesus needed sanctuary. He needed sanctuary. He was forced to go to a country that he was not a member of. He was told there was no room in the inn. He was treated by the Herod of that day who was narcissistic and egotistical and afraid and insecure. He was told by the Herod of that day, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to destroy you. And he had to run. His mother had to run during pregnancy. And she could not find sanctuary in the hotel of Herod's day, but she found sanctuary among the shepherds and among the sheep and the animals. How sad it is when we treat animals better than we treat people, but more importantly, when we treat people like animals. Our Latino brothers and sisters are being treated like animals, not like persons, like chattel, not like human beings. And the church must be a place to congregations, bodies of faith must be a place where we recognize the imago dei of everyone and we say come on in and by coming in we say to the forces there to get them you have to get us because we're united in love. That is something that every so often in history people of faith have to take this step and refuse to just talk about justice on Sunday or on Saturday, or on Friday. But we have to be love present, be welcoming present, be justice present every day of the week. Any others? Who are we gonna call? Everybody. Now down south, this is how we say everybody. Everybody you know, city council, flood them, city council, county commissioners, your representatives in Congress, the president, hotline, the senators, everybody you know, and then make it, you know, keep, keep, keep doing it, spread it, you know, tell it, because we have to do our part. She's the most courageous among us. We are simply following in her footsteps, and we're not even close. So let us do what we can do to make a difference. And as I said, finally, tell her story. And when you tell it to people, say, imagine this. And then at the end, say, now imagine it was your mama. Imagine it was your sister. And then from that place, think about what you would do in this situation. I got to run to catch this plane, hopefully. So pastor, thank you so much. I guess they're going to try to let me. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to tell you for it. Reverend Barber, as a small token uh -oh. of our deep appreciation, I'd like to share this gift from this congregation and our, our network, Thank you. Sanctuary Network. Thank you. It's something from India uh -oh. and also something from here. See, you're trying to make me a Unitarian. I already told you I was going to jump. <laughs> Yeah. Would, would, would you do one? <laughs> would, would you do one favor for me? And I, I normally wouldn't do this because y'all know I'm from the South, so I believe in yes, hugging sir. and kissing everybody. But Reverend Della has told me we got to get to the airport. Yes. So if y'all just let, don't, I, if I don't shake your hand, it's not because I'm being mean. I just need to, I, I, I got to hop where I got to get to. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you.